Welcome back. In the previous segment, we saw how to declare arrays with and without initialization and how to access the elements, how to use them in computation, how to uh, read and read values into it and print the values. Now we are going to see some larger examples of using arrays. So we are going to start with a relatively simple familiar sounding problem. Okay. So the problem is you are supposed to write a program that reads in marks of 100 students in a class and the marks are given in the order of the roll number. And let us say in this class the roll numbers happen to go from 0 to 999. So yes, I know that roll numbers usually do not start at 0, but just, just for fun, let us say they do start over 0 over 0. So in this class, the roll num there are 100 students and their roll numbers go through go from 0 through 99. So that is the first part of what the program is supposed to do. After that, students may arrive in any order and type their roll number using the keyboard. The program must reply to that by printing out their marks. So maybe first the student with the roll number 43 comes, then the program is supposed to print out what marks student number 43 got. Then there may be 67, so marks for 67 may be printed. Then there may be 6, then the marks for the student with roll number 6 should be printed and so on. Now if at any time an illegal number is given, then the program must terminate. Okay? So this is, this is the specification, this is what our program is expected to achieve. Okay, so what does the program look like? So we clearly should have an array in which we should be storing the marks and so let us say we have an array of doubles and of 100 elements. We need 100 elements because we have 100 students. Now the first step is to read in all the values, all, all the uh, marks that the students uh, have received. And we were told that the, that the marks will be typed in in this order. So uh, first the marks for 0, then the marks for 1, then the marks for 2. So it is natural to write this for loop where in the ith iteration we are reading in the marks obtained by student i and placing that in marks of i. And then there is the loop in which we are going to wait for students to come and type their roll numbers. Okay. So for this, let us say we have a variable called roll number and we will print out a message saying, uh, saying uh, roll number. So this will be a cue to the students to type their roll numbers. So then we will read in whatever the students are typing. And now if the students have typed a valid roll number, then we should print out the corresponding marks. Okay. So if roll number less than 0 or roll number greater than 99, that is an invalid number. So in that case, we are going to stop execution. So we are going to break out of this loop. Otherwise, we know that the roll number that was typed in lies between 0 and 99. So in fact, it is a valid index as far as the array is concerned. So we are just going to print out marks of roll number and that is the end of the loop. So if you break out of it, the program will terminate and that would be the end. Now let us do a slightly more interesting version of this okay, where we are going to read in everything but we are going to print out the roll numbers of those students who got the highest marks. So here is the program. So let us say that the marks array was defined as before and we have read in the marks exactly as before. So now we want to figure out first what is the, what are the highest marks. Okay? So for this we are going to have a variable called max so far. So max so far we are going to initialize to 0. And the way to interpret this is that at the beginning of the ith iteration of this loop, we are going to make sure that max so far holds 
the maximum of the marks between 0 and i okay? or 0 and i minus 1. So indeed before entering the loop okay, max so far is the value of mark 0. So it is indeed trivially the maximum amongst all say mark 0 all the way till marks of i minus 1 which is 0 itself. So it is in fact, so there is only one element in this set marks of 0 through i minus 1 because both, both of these will be 0 and indeed mark so far is that value. But this plan says that not only should this be true at the beginning of the i of, of the of the first iteration when i is 1, but it should be true for all iterations. So if it is true for all iterations, then our body of the loop should make it be so. Okay. So what do we need to do? Well, so when we enter this loop, we know that max so far is the maximum amongst 0 through i minus 1. So if the next number marks of i is bigger than this, then our marks, our max should change. Otherwise, our max should be as before. So all that we need to do is to write max so far is the max of max so far, whatever we have seen so far and whatever we see next, the next marks value. Okay. So this max is a statement, is, is a function which is already defined in C++. And in fact, we know that uh, C++ functions that C++ defines for math purposes are in this include in this header file called cmath. So indeed max comes from that header file cmath, that is it. So what would be what would be true at the end of it? So on the 99th iteration what would be true? Okay, or yeah, so on the 99th iteration what would be true? So uh, uh, i equals 1 and i equals 99, so uh, at that point uh, max so far should hold the, uh, the maximum of uh, everything from 0 through 99. Okay? And indeed that means max so far will have value of the maximum possible marks. So at this point we have identified what the maximum marks so far are. Okay? So max so far now holds max value in the entire array. Now we just have to check which are the marks or which are the roll numbers really who have got that many marks. So we again go over all the elements this time even including 0 and we are going to check are the marks of i equal to max so far. If so, then we should print out i. So that is that is it. Okay? So there are two ideas which have been used in this which are worth noting. So in this first part, we are doing something which might be called accumulation. So max so far is accumulating the maximum value. It is keeping track of the maximum value. Okay? And this is a very standard idiom. Here we are keeping track of the maximum value. But you may keep track say of the sum of all the values. Again, it is going to be something like that. Instead of max of max so far and max i, it might be something like plus of something and something, uh, something and marks i. Okay, so that is one idiom. And then in the second part, we are going over all the elements again, but we are printing out only some subset, though that subset which satisfy this condition. Okay? And in other words, we are filtering out things. And therefore, this idiom is often called a filtering idiom. Okay, so let us see a demo of this. And uh, this is going to be in uh, a file highest.cpp which I have created already but I am going to show it to you. Okay. So let me get to that file. So highest.cpp is this. Okay. So you can see that we have used marks 100 arrays before and then we are doing C in marks okay, all of this. Okay. And, uh, this is our max array. Okay, now this is the program that you have seen. Okay? Now I am going to make a change to it because I do not want to type all the 100 element, 100 numbers. Okay? So I am going to change it 
so that I will only use 10 numbers. So I should really change all the hundreds to tens. All right, so let's see. So let's compile this. And let us run it. So okay, now when I'm going to run this, I'm going to do something slightly unusual, something that you may not have seen so far. You, you have not seen so far in this course. So normally I am expecting, so when I run this program C++ expects me to type the values uh, from the keyboard. But if I have to test a program often then typing the values especially 10 values even is a bit cumbersome. So what I am going to do instead is that I have already typed in those values in this file highest.tat. So maybe I should show you that first. So, so if I do this highest dot dat, it will show you that I have already typed in these values. So these are my 10, 10, number, 10 marks. Okay? So marks for uh, student 0, roll number 0 are 65 for student roll number 1, 42, 2, 78 and so on. Okay? So these numbers I have already typed. Now if I do dot slash a dot out and I say less than highest dot dat then instead of taking input from the keyboard, this program will take the input from that file. Okay? So let us see that. So it took the input from the file and then it has printed those roll numbers for which the uh, marks were the highest possible. So let us check that. So if we look at this, which were the highest marks? Well, 91 is the highest mark, right? And where did this appear? So it, 0, this is roll number 0, this is roll number 1, 2, 3. So indeed, roll number 3 got 91, 4, 5, so indeed 5 got 91, 6, 7, 8, 9. So roll number 9 also got 91. So it has indeed printed out things correctly. So here we saw that our program, this program was executed, okay, but we changed the number of students so that only 10 students were used. And uh, here the input uh, data, uh, sorry, the, the data was taken from the file rather than by, rather than through the keyboard because we wrote less than highest dot dat. Okay. Okay, so a small exercise for you. Okay, usually we will have roll numbers starting at 1 rather than 0. To handle this, a simple strategy is to store the marks of roll number i in marks of i minus 1. So we have written two programs so far. So this exercise says modify both the programs so that they follow this convention. So they follow the more usual convention that student roll number start at 1 and not at 0. So what have we discussed in this segment? Well, we saw a couple of simple programs involving arrays okay? and uh, an important point to note is that although roll numbers are involved, okay, we did not actually store the roll number anywhere okay? because the index played the role of the roll numbers. So because we stored the marks of roll number 0 first, then the marks of roll number 1, the marks of roll number 2, we, we sort of implicitly made a correspondence between the roll number and the mark. And then the program involved a few important idioms. So going through all the elements of an array and filtering out the elements to print and also the accumulating the maximum of all the elements in a variable. And we will continue with more examples, but we will take a quick break.